So in this first problem, it says that both pairs of opposites, uh, oh, and by the way, we're going to go over this 4-3 practice. Um, if both pairs of opposite sides of a quadrilateral are congruent, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So these are sides. Then it says if both pairs of blank of a quadrilateral are parallel, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So this would be sides again. Um, the next one says if an angle of a quadrilateral is supplementary to both of its consecutive angles, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So this is supplementary. Our next one is if one pair of opposite sides of a quadrilateral are both parallel, this was our new one, and congruent, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. If the diagonals of a quadrilateral bisect each other, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. And then it says if both pairs of opposite angles of a quadrilateral are congruent, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So those are the answers to our first few questions, and those are the rules that we use to determine whether something is a parallelogram or not. So number two um, in this whole set of problems here, it says determine whether each quadrilateral must be a parallelogram and justify your answers. Well, in number two, we do have some uh, diagonals, some stuff on diagonals, but what we don't have is them bisecting each other. If they had been bisected, then this diagonal would have one tick mark on each part of it like this, and this other one would have two ticks here and two ticks here, and that's not what we see. So um, we don't have enough information here, so we're going to write not enough information. Number three, um, we have that one diagonal is being bisected, and we have one, that one pair of sides is parallel. That's not going to help us. We would have to have that both diagonals are being bisected or that both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. So here again, we have not enough information. Number four, we have one pair of sides that is both parallel and congruent. The parallel symbols are the arrows, and the congruent symbols are the tick marks. So in this one, we would say yes, because one pair of sides, one pair of opposite sides, is both parallel and congruent. Congruent, yeah. Number five. On number five, um, we should be able to see that we can write, we can mark the third angle here by the third angle's theorem. So we're going to write that first. Third angle's theorem. And then, because both pairs of opposite angles are congruent, which we should be able to see because this is 1 and 2 here, and this is 1 and 2 there. So, yes, both pairs of opposite angles are congruent. All right, number six. Now, number six, we don't know what x is, but we can try this to see if x plus x equals 180, that would make it 2x equals 180, so x would be equal to 90. And then if we did x plus 180 minus x equals 180, well, we would see that we subtract 180 from both sides. That would give us x minus x equals what? Zero. So x equals x, because when we subtract the x from both sides. Um, so we could solve this. Um, so we could say that it is supplementary here and supplementary here. So let me go ahead and erase this so you guys can see what I would say. So yes, we could say it. Both um, let's just say it this way. Uh, yes, angle 
we'll say one angle is supplementary to both its consecutive angles. I don't know what that is. One angle is supplementary to both its consecutive angles. All right, number seven. I say no here. And the reason I say no is because we only have one pair of sides that is congruent to each other, and we have a different pair of sides that is parallel to each other. Now, if we have both sets of sides that were congruent to each other, both pairs of opposite sides that were congruent to each other, then yes, we could do it. If we have both pairs of opposite sides that were parallel to each other, we could do it. So the answer here, again, is not enough information. So number eight says find x and y is it pqrs a parallelogram y or y not so we see some opposite sides here so we could set those equal to, equal to each other 3x plus 15 equals 19x minus 9. Um, so we get 6x equals 24 x equals 4. so when we plug that x back in 4 times 13 is 52 plus 15 is 67 and uh, 19 times 4 minus 9 is also 67. So we do see that we have a pair of sides that are congruent. Um, and then uh, when we look at um, Q and R, they are consecutive angles so they should be supplementary. So 4y plus 7 plus 10y minus 37 equals 180. So that would be 14y minus 30 equals 180. So that would be 14y equals 210. Y would be equal to 15. Now, the challenge with this is, if we plug this back in, 10 times 15 is 150 minus 37. That's 113. So this angle right here would be 113. And the other one should be 113 minus 180. So 4 times 15. And we add 7 to that. That gives us 67. Those are supplementary. Now here's our problem. If this line was parallel to this line, that would be same side interior angles. So we could prove that this top line PQ and SR are parallel, but that doesn't help us with the other lines PS and QR. And to prove that this was a parallelogram, we'd have to have the same pair of sides that are both congruent and parallel. So in this case, again, we ha don't have enough information. Now on y'all's problem for number nine, um, I would have had 2a is equal to 0.5b plus 1.1 or b is equal to 3a plus 0 0.1. Now I could solve this with a system of equations um, and plug it back in and find out what those answers are. Y'all may not remember that. So we could have said 2a is equal to 0.5 times 3a plus 0.1. I think that's 0.1. Uh, plus 1.1. What's ultimately going to happen is well, we're going to get 4.3 for A and then we could plug that back in and get B. Now B would have been 13, okay? So when we did that, um, we would have proven that uh, B was 13 and 3 times 4.3 would be 12.9 and 12.9 plus 1 is 13. So both of these would have been 13 and 13 and um, the other one up here, 2 times A, is 8.6, and this would have been 8.6. So ultimately, if we'd solved for A and B, which y'all might have had a challenge to do, but if we had, um, then we could have said that uh, HI is congruent with FI, and EI is congruent with GI, and why are these parallelograms? Because the diagonals bisect each other.
okay? So um, this one down here, number 10. Now number 10, on y'all's paper, you only had that these opposite angles were there and congruent. I put the 47 on there. So what I did was set these equal to each other. So 5x plus 38 equals 8x minus 19. That would have given us 3x equals 47. Is that 47? Yes. No. 57. So x is equal to 19. So when we plug that 19 back in there, 8 times 19 minus 19, that's going to give us 133 right here. And when we do 5 times 19 plus 38, that's also 133. Now, the way the problem was given to us, we didn't have enough information. But if we had the 47 degree angle, then we could say that it is a parallelogram because um, both angles B and D were supplementary to angle C. Number 11. Now, number 11, we definitely don't have enough information. These two angles are supplementary. We can solve for X. But um, when we add those two together, we would get what the angles were. So we would have done 10x minus 23 plus 5x minus 7 equals 180. We could solve for that part. Um, so that would give us 15x minus 30 equals 180. 15x equals 210. Let me do it. 210 divided by 15 was 14. So x is equal to 14, and then we plug that back in. 10 times 14 would be 140 minus 23. That's going to give us 117 for this angle C. And for angle F, 5 times 14 minus 7, that gives us 63. Those angles are supplementary, and we could find those. Now the challenge would be, what we need another piece of information, either that opposite angles were congruent here, or that, um, oh, by this one was not enough. And so this one, the, the other one, this one that we were just doing is not enough information either. So, because we need another angle or another two angles. So, hopefully that clarifies things for y'all for tomorrow.